everybody and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing another video in my color comparison series. Today's video is going to be on Sap Green and I have three different brands here like last time. I have the Winsor & Newton, the Daniel Smith, and the M. Graham Sap Green to show for you guys today. So the Winsor & Newton is PG36 and PY110. So it's two pigments, and let me go ahead and show you that one first. I've also, this time, I've taken and put a little strip down of some black uh, waterproof ink so that we can get an idea of the transparency. Oops, I didn't get enough there. So this is the Winsor Newton. And I have found that the Winsor & Newton paints, the half pans at least, but really all of them, they re-wet better if you spray them down maybe, maybe five or ten minutes before you begin painting. And the color will release for you far better that way. And the next one that I have is the Daniel Smith. The Daniel Smith Sap Green is three pigments. Um, it is P048, PY150, and PG6. You can see this one can get darker. And it's more natural looking. It's more believable. Not that there's anything wrong with the Winsor & Newton Sap Green. It, I actually really do like the Winsor & Newton Sap Green, but I do feel like I have to dull it down a little bit more um, because you could just see that it's, you know, a little bit more vibrant. But that can be an advantage because it's always easier or well you can always make a clean color dirty but you can never make a dirty color clean again so maybe that's what their thought process there was and the Daniel Smith paints re-wet very well uh, maybe not quite as well as the M Graham which is the next one I have to show you but they don't have that tacky issue either where the M Grahams can stay quite tacky and sometimes might not dry down um, you know, quite at all for you in some instances. So that doesn't bother me because I'm a studio painter and I really like the M. Graham paints. But if you like to take your paints out more plein air, you know, and on the go with you, then you might prefer the Daniel Smith. So right off the bat, before they even dry, I noticed that there is a pretty significant hue difference. Did I mention that the M-Gram is PG7 and PY110? Okay, so it's the phthalo green and that isodinone yellow. So out, they are all significantly quite different from one another. The Winsor Newton, I can really see that phthalo green in there and it's the most vibrant out of all of them. The Daniel Smith is the most yellow. You know, it, it looks like it might have, it, it kind of looks like what you would get if you mixed quinacridone gold with a little bit of phthalo green. It's got that kind of yellow glow to it is what I'm trying to say. And the M. Graham is more blue. <laughs> so, but these two are much more natural, more earthen, as where this one is a little bit more, a little bit more unbelievable as a natural earth green. So while I'm letting those dry, I'm going to do a couple paint mixes for you. The first one that I want to do is I'm going to mix the sap green with a little bit of yellow. This is Hansa Yellow Medium by Daniel Smith that I'm going to be mixing each of the sap greens with because it's a common paint mixture that I would use to yellow my green. So there is the Winsor & Newton with the Hansa Yellow Medium. You can see that is very vibrant. 
electrically vibrant. I had heard somewhere um, that it was a known issue that Winsor & Newton and Daniel Smith paints don't mix well together, but I've not had that problem at all. Leave me a comment down below and let me know if that's been your experience, if you have issues with the pigments repelling one another, because I've not had that happen at all. And I can't imagine why that would be because they're both using gum arabic as the binder, so I just don't understand. I'm not saying it's not happening to some some people. I'm just saying I've not had that issue. There that is with some yellow. It's beautiful. And here's the M Graham sap green with that Hansa yellow medium. So you really can see that they all do mix quite different. While that's still wet, I'm just gonna take and add a little bit more yellow to the bottom of each of these. Just to see how yellow we can get it. I hope you guys are enjoying the video. If you are, don't forget to give me a thumbs up. It really helps out my channel. Help out a smaller channel, help me to grow. Very nice. And then lastly, what may surprise you, I'm gonna use some Daniel Smith Quinacridone Purple. And I'm going to mix a little of that into each of the sap greens because that's a mixture that I use quite a bit in my work. So here is the Winsor Newton. And you start to get this really beautiful dark forest green. That's one of my favorite green paint recipes right there. Now I'll do the same with the Daniel Smith. Yeah, see with the Daniel Smith, and you'll be able to see it in just one second, because it's more yellow, look what happens. It starts to go very brown uh, with the same amount of the, you're not gonna get that foresty green color. But that's not a bad color either. This is kind of like a raw umber type shade a cool green biased brown. Not bad, but certainly not the way to mix a dark green with that color. And then a little bit of the violet into the gram. And then here that mixture is, I think I Maybe need a little bit more of the M. Graham sap green in there. It got watered down a little too much. So let me just add a little more pigment. There we go. There we are. So with the Daniel Smith, I think if you wanted to take it to more of that dark um, kind of blue-green or foresty green place, it might be better to take some of that sap green and maybe mix in a little bit of the ultramarine blue. And that is going to get you a little bit more vibrant of a dark green mixture. Um, from this color because it has such a strong glowing yellow base that it just goes kind of brown and dead uh, a little bit too quickly there. And I can also show you the Winsor & Newton with the ultramarine blue there. Let's get some of that blue. Oh, beautiful, look at that. And it stays very vibrant. 
Very vibrant. That's gorgeous. That's kind of like a deep kind of aqua teal kind of color. See that? And just to be fair, I'm going to go ahead and include the um, Ram Sap Green with some ultramarine blue as well. So that's beautiful as well. It's like that beautiful like under the sea kind of dark green teal color. All right, so just like last time, I've allowed this to dry up completely. I did do a glaze on the right-hand side of each of the original swatches, and I also did a flow wet into wet test on each of them. So beginning with the Windsor & Newton, their um, sap green is absolutely beautiful. It is the most unnatural though it's just very bright very vivid it has the highest chroma of all of the ones here so while it swatches somewhat unnatural i did find that while mixing it especially with complementary colors or near complementary colors it still maintained very vibrant and fresh mixes so you know, it's not just all about how a paint initially swatches out. As you can see, that only tells one part of the story. When you start mixing it, some will mix more fresh than others, and some might mix a little bit dirtier, as was somewhat the case with the Daniel Smith, and I'll come back to that in a second. So when I mixed it with the Quinn Violet, I did get a nice, beautiful forest green color that could be used in the shadows of foliage. I also like how it mixed with the ultramarine blue, and it mixed with the yellow a little bit unnatural. I have to be honest, that is such a glowing acid green, kind of like a permanent green light kind of color. And for my uses, personal preference, um, I would have to dull that down a little bit to use it. However, and I've also noticed I say that way too much in videos. However, <laughs> um, you can dull it. So it gives you so much more versatility when you start out with something that's a little bit brighter and fresher because you can always make that color a little more dirty, but you can't ever make um, a more dirty color clean again. Similarly with all of their watercolors, I don't think that they move quite as much wet into wet as you can see by the comparisons here. But I don't think that's a bad thing at all. It offers you more control. I don't know if the other brands might be using Oxgall or something like that, a flow agent. You can always add something to your paint water to make them flow more if you want that. So that absolutely can be an advantage also because you're going to get more control that way. It's going to spread and soften for you, but it's going to stay relatively where you put it. And it was very transparent. The Daniel Smith, um, as I already mentioned, it mixes more toward the yellow. I think it looks beautiful in the swatches, and it is one of my favorite sap greens. However, oh, there's that word again. I'm sorry, I'm going to try and work on that. <laughs> um, when I mixed it with the yellow, I loved it. When I started to mix it toward the Quinn Violet from Daniel Smith, um, it went brown on me. It looks like a raw umber kind of shade. Not a bad thing, but I really wanted that deep dark forest kind of neutral shadow green color I was able to get from the other brands. And I just felt like I wasn't truly able to get it. When I went to the ultramarine blue, you know, that's definitely usable, but still not the color I was after. It's still a little bit um, too vibrant. It's not quite neutralized down some. So, you know, I think I'd have to experiment around with it a little bit. It flowed beautifully, it glazed nicely on itself, and is very, very transparent. And the M. Graham, which is the last one that I have to show you, um, which is a mixture of PG7 and PY110, is... I would call more semi-transparent. I hate to say that, ugh, but it really is the truth. While I love M. Graham Sap Green, it it's not opaque by any means. It's not chalky, but it's still not as transparent as the other ones, I have to be honest. And something interesting that the M. Grahams does that I have no explanation for, it granulates. 
uh, where there's no granulating pigments in its convenient mixture here. I mean, PG7 doesn't granulate, and PY110 does not granulate. It's not granulating over here or here, but it does granulate. Now, I like that effect in foliage, and so when I want that granulation, I go with the M Grant, especially in the more watery mixes, you can really see it, and in all the resulting mixtures, but and it's not like a heavy granulation, but it's still, it is granulating some. I don't have an explanation for that. It mixed very cleanly with the yellow. It mixed exactly as I would expect it would with the Quinn Violet and with the Ultramarine Blue. So I'm very happy with the M. Graham Sap Green. It is very saturated and it can get the darkest. But when I see it over that black line, I would not call it opaque or even semi-opaque. Um, but... I, I can tell that it's just, just not quite, it's just a hair's breadth less transparent than the others, to be completely honest. It flowed beautifully wet into wet. Um, I got that nice cauliflower effect that I like to get sometimes, but um, overall, they all mixed out very, very nicely. And I'm not, I don't want you to get the wrong idea and think I'm unsatisfied with the Daniel Smith because I actually really do like the Daniel Smith Sap Green and I have repurchased it already because I like it. But um, it's just that extra yellow variant in there does throw a little bit of a wild card into the mix when trying to do uh, color mixes for me. But it's all personal preference. Which one of these is my favorite? Well, um, I can't really pick a 100% favorite because I like all of them. I really do. And I think they each one of them has their place. Comment down below and let me know which one of these is your favorite sap green. And if your favorite sap green brand isn't here, still let me know what it might be. Which one should you purchase? If you could only purchase one, um, I think I'd steer you toward the Windsor & Newton. Only because... I think that it gives you the most vibrant color mixing possibilities. You're going to get the most mileage out of it. It's not already as dull as some of the others, so you can mix a little bit of rose into it or a little bit of violet um, or even a warm gamboge kind of yellow, which would have a little orange in it, and get some of these other colors. Um, and so your resulting color mixtures, you're going to get more versatility out of it. And they're more readily available. Like you can walk into a Michaels, a Seymour, well a Seymour is gone. Um, but most of the big box stores have Windsor Newton also. And you can use a coupon on them. And they also have some really large tubes of this available. So this is a very good sap green. They're all good though. So I can't tell you which one that I think that you should choose. But I wanted to say thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it and you got the value from the video, don't forget to give me a thumbs up and subscribe. Help out my channel. And as always, have a great day and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.